Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Jonathan Evans. And I'm Ashley Thompson. This program is aimed at English learners, so we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. Today on the program, you will hear from Susan Shand and Brian Lynn. Later, we will present our American history series, The Making of a Nation. But first... I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear... I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear... That I will faithfully execute... That I will faithfully execute... The office of President of the United States... Office of President of the United States... With those words, Joe Biden was sworn in Wednesday as the 46th President of the United States. Speaking to Americans for the first time as President, Biden said, Today we celebrate the triumph not of a candidate, but of a cause, the cause of democracy. At this hour, my friends, democracy has prevailed. Biden came to office at a time of severe crisis in America. Just two weeks earlier, supporters of outgoing President Donald Trump attacked the Capitol in an attempt to prevent Biden from taking office. And millions of Americans have lost their jobs in the pandemic that has claimed more than 400,000 lives. At the age of 78, Biden is the oldest person to hold the office of U.S. President. He said, Few people in our nation's history have been more challenged or found a time more challenging or difficult than the time we're in now. To overcome these challenges, Biden said, it requires the most elusive of all things in a democracy, unity. Biden added that he will be a president for all Americans and will fight as hard for those who did not support me as for those who did. Surrounded by his wife, Jill, and family members, Biden placed his left hand on the Bible that has been in his family for 127 years. He then took the oath of office from U.S. Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts just before noon, Wednesday. Looking on were three former presidents, Barack Obama, George W. Bush, and Bill Clinton. Donald Trump, the 45th president, had already left Washington earlier in the morning, but his vice president, Mike Pence, attended the ceremony. The event took place in front of a Capitol building surrounded with high fences and concrete barriers. About 25,000 National Guard troops and other security forces were brought in to protect the city. On the National Mall, 200,000 flags were placed to represent the usual crowd members who could not attend. Biden and Harris had asked Americans to watch the inauguration at home because of the coronavirus pandemic. The day included performances from singers Lady Gaga, Jennifer Lopez, and Garth Brooks. A 22-year-old poet, Amanda Gorman, noted that while democracy can be permanently delayed, it can never be permanently denied. She added, For while we have our eyes on the future, history has its eyes on us. The fight against the virus that causes COVID-19 has taken a new turn. 
reports of mutations are appearing quickly. Many scientists fear that a variant of the new coronavirus may appear that cannot be prevented by a known treatment or vaccine. The genes of the coronavirus are changing, and health officials say the high number of new cases is the main reason. Each new infection gives the virus a chance to mutate as it makes copies of itself. Each mutation threatens to undo the progress made in the last year of fighting the pandemic. On Friday, the World Health Organization urged more efforts to find new variants. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said a new variant first identified in Britain a few months ago might become the number one virus in the U.S. by March. It does not cause more severe illness, but it could cause more hospitalizations and deaths. We're taking it really very seriously, Dr. Anthony Fauci said on American Television Sunday. He is the U.S. government's top infectious disease expert. We need to do everything we can now to get transmission as low as we possibly can, said Harvard University's Dr. Michael Mina. He said that the best way to stop mutations is to slow the spread of the virus. So far, vaccines remain effective. There are, however, signs that some tests and drug treatments may not work with the new variants. The virus may create a mutation that makes it more dangerous, said Dr. Pardis Sabeti. She is an evolutionary biologist at the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard. It is normal for viruses to mutate. A mutation that strengthens the virus helps it to survive by pushing out the weaker variants. Just a few months after the coronavirus was discovered in China, a mutation called D614G began to spread. It quickly became a major form of the virus. Trevor Bedford is a biologist with the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in Seattle. Last week, he wrote on Twitter, Now we've started to see some striking evolution of the virus. New variants have also been found in South Africa and Brazil. A main mutation in the variant identified in Britain appears to be in another variant that was found in Ohio, said Dan Jones. He is a molecular pathologist at Ohio State University, who announced that finding last week. This is important because it does not appear the mutation was created as the result of travel. Rather, the virus may mutate in the same way in different places, Jones said. I'm Susan Shand. Like so many other things over the past year, the world's largest consumer electronics show, CES, looked very different in 2021. The popular conference usually takes place in Las Vegas, with thousands of people attending. But the physical conference was canceled this year 
because of the coronavirus crisis. CES organizers, however, decided to hold a virtual CES show for the first time. Here are some of the top technology trends presented by companies at this year's online event. Many new technologies created to help fight the coronavirus were found at this year's virtual show. Several companies demonstrated new disinfecting robots. The South Korean manufacturer LG introduced a self-moving robot that sends out ultraviolet light designed to kill viruses on heavily touched surfaces. LG also presented a wearable air purifier and a device that can be carried around to purify air in a car or office. A German company called AirPop showed off its Active Plus smart mask. The device measures breathing movements and tests the quality of surrounding air. Several companies are also now offering touchless appliances and other products for the home. Kohler and Toto both showed touchless sinks and toilets that can be controlled by hand movements or by speaking to voice assistant technology. Each year at CES, major television manufacturers present the latest industry technologies that could one day be included in everyone's home TVs. In addition to the yearly offerings of bigger, brighter, and sharper TVs, LG Display showed off a smart bed. The product includes a see-through TV that rises up from the bed structure. Another version of that TV is designed for use in restaurants. It would permit guests to look at the list of available foods while watching food being prepared behind it. LG has also announced a bendable TV version that can change its shape on demand, a creation designed for gamers. Companies showed several 5G products in 2021 after years of promises that the wireless technology would connect devices in new, superfast networks. Verizon chief Hans Vestberg gave the main speech to open the show. He spoke about the next generation of high-speed wireless technology and what it can offer for telemedicine, distance learning, and other uses. On the last day of CES, Samsung presented its latest 5G-ready Galaxy phones. Throughout the show, other companies held discussions and showed the uses for 5G in phones and other products. Many people across the world have now had almost a year of experience getting used to working at home. During that time, people have had the chance to see what things work and what things do not. Companies are offering a series of devices and products aimed at improving the home office. For example, computer maker Dell showed off a video conference monitor that is easy to move around to get to the best position for video calls. The American company Shure presented a microphone for the home office designed to improve speech audio quality for video conferencing. And Targus is offering a product designed to disinfect desk electronics as well as an anti-germ backpack for carrying around work computers and devices. This year's CES provided an early look at the latest in electric and self-driving vehicle technologies. Mercedes-Benz showed off its artificial intelligence-powered 
hyperscreen, which stretches across the entire width of the car. The device can answer voice commands and lets the driver and front seat passenger do things like make a phone call or activate seat settings. Fiat Chrysler offered interactive three-dimensional or 3D virtual tours of its cars and technology. The company also worked with Google to create an augmented reality model of its Jeep Wrangler 4XE electric and gas vehicle that people can see on their phones. I'm Brian Lynn. Welcome to The Making of a Nation, American History in VOA Special English. The years after World War I were an important turning point in the making of the American nation. The country turned away from the problems of Europe. Now it would deal with problems of its own. Kay Gallant and Morris Joyce tell about the many changes in America during the early 1920s. There was a presidential election in America in 1920. President Woodrow Wilson was not a candidate. He had suffered a stroke and was too sick. The two major candidates were Democrat James Cox and Republican Warren Harding. Voters had a clear choice between the two candidates. Cox supported the ideas of President Wilson. He believed the United States should take an active part in world affairs. Harding opposed the idea of internationalism. He believed the United States should worry only about events within its own borders. Warren Harding won the election. By their votes, Americans made clear they were tired of sacrificing lives and money to solve other people's problems. They just wanted to live their own lives and make their own country a better place. This was a great change in the nation's thinking. For 20 years since the beginning of the century, the United States had become more involved in international events. Young Americans had grown up with presidents like Woodrow Wilson and Theodore Roosevelt. Both Wilson and Roosevelt had active foreign policies. Both helped start the nation on the road to becoming a major world power. Then came World War I. It was like a sharp needle that burst a balloon. The United States and the Allies won the war against Germany and the Central Powers. But thousands of American troops had died in the European conflict, and many months were taken up by the bitter debate over the peace treaty and the League of Nations. Most Americans did not want to hear about Europe and international peace organizations anymore. Instead, Americans became more concerned with material things. During World War I, they had lived under many kinds of restrictions. The federal government had controlled railroads, shipping, and industrial production. At the end of the war, these controls were lifted. Industries that had been making war supplies began making products for a peacetime economy. Wages for most workers in the United States were higher than ever. 
at the beginning of the 1920s. Men and women had enough money to enjoy life more than they had in the past. It possible for millions of people to improve their lives. It also caused great changes in American society. Two of the most important new technologies were automobiles and radio. In the early years of the 20th century, automobiles were very costly. Each one was built separately by a small team of skilled workers. Most Americans did not have the money to own an automobile. Then Henry Ford decided to make cars everyone could buy. He built them on an assembly line. Cars were put together or assembled as they moved slowly through the factory. Each worker did just one thing to the car before it moved on to the next worker. In this way, the Ford Motor Company could build cars more quickly and easily, and it could sell them for much less money. Before long, there were cars everywhere. All these cars created a need for better roads. Outside cities, most roads were made just of dirt. They were chokingly dusty in dry weather and impassably muddy in the rain. They were rough and full of holes. Few bridges connected roads across rivers and streams. America's new drivers demanded that these problems be fixed. So local and state governments began building and improving roads as they had never done before. As new roads were built, many new businesses opened along them. There were gasoline stations and auto repair shops, of course, but soon there were eating places and hotels where travelers could eat and sleep. In the 1920s, the United States was becoming a nation of car lovers. Cars changed more than the way Americans traveled. They changed the way Americans lived. They removed some of the limitations of living conditions. For example, families with cars no longer had to live in noisy, crowded cities. They could live in suburbs, the wide open areas outside cities. They could use their car to drive to work in the city. Businesses moved too. No longer did they have to be close to railroad lines. With new cars and trucks, they could transport their goods where they wanted when they wanted. They were no longer limited by train times. Cars also made life on farms less lonely. It became much easier for farm families to go to town on business or to visit friends. Cars helped Americans learn more about their nation. In the 1920s, people could drive all across the land for not much money. Places that used to be days apart now seemed suddenly closer. Families that normally stayed home on weekends and holidays began to explore the country. They drove to the seashores and lakeshores, to the mountains and forests, to places of historical importance or natural beauty. 
Not all the changes linked to the car were good, of course. Automobile accidents became more common and deadly. Other forms of transportation, such as railroads, began to suffer from the competition. Some railroads had to close down. Horses and wagons, once the most common form of transportation, began to disappear from city streets. There were not enough cars in the 1920s to cause severe air pollution, but the air was becoming less pure every year, and the roads were becoming more crowded and noisy. Completely changed America's transportation. Radio greatly changed its communications. The first radio station opened in the state of Pennsylvania in 1920. Within 10 years, there were hundreds of others. There were more than 13 million radio receivers. Most of the radio stations were owned by large broadcasting networks. These networks were able to broadcast the same program to stations all over the country. Most programs were simple and entertaining. There were radio plays, comedy shows, and music programs. But there also were news reports and political events. Millions of people who never read newspapers now heard the news on radio. Citizens everywhere could hear the president's voice. Like the automobile, radio helped bring Americans together. They were able to share many of the same events and experiences. Radio also was a great help to companies. Businesses could buy time on radio programs for advertisements. In these ads, they told listeners about their products they urge them to buy the products, cars, electric refrigerators, foods, medicines. In this way, companies quickly and easily created a nationwide demand for their goods. Automobiles and radios were not the only new technologies to change American life in the days after World War I. Still, one more invention would have a great effect on how Americans spent their time and money. That was the motion picture. And that's our program for today. Listen again tomorrow to learn English through stories from around the world. I'm Jonathan Evans. And I'm Ashley Thompson. <laughs> 